Um, thank you, organizers, inviting me here. It's a beautiful place, and I'm very happy to come and speak about structural biology. Um, do first, we have first huh? structural biology talk? Yeah, this is what I wanted to mention. Okay. The name of our school is RNA function and structure. So let's add a little bit structure to, to the general. So my question is actually to the auditorium. Do we have someone who is working with classical structural biology approaches? Oh, we have at least one person. So is it NMR, X-ray? NMR. NMR. Okay, good. So classical structural biology contains three different methods today. is NMR, X-ray analysis, and cryo-electron microscopy. Especially last year, uh, cryo-EM made significant progress, and now we can analyze macromolecules, the large macromolecule complexes at very high resolution, and, have, and do interpretation at the level of uh, atoms. So, um, I am going to speak today and tomorrow about protein biosynthesis mechanism and first of all about ribosome. Uh, ribosome is the biggest ribosomal, uh, biggest RNA in the cell, so it's easy. I am kind of fitting in the, in the, in the profile of this school. So, before going to the general talk, I wanted to mention why it is so much important to work with, with ribosome. Uh, I think it comes from, from this central dogma of molecular biology formulated by Francis Crick, that there are three important uh, polymerase uh, actions. One is about DNA and replication of DNA. Then then we have DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and then we have translation, where we have transformation of one type of code written by, by nucleotides in, in RNA cases and, and DNA in RNA cases to the proteins. And the machinery which is responsible for this transformation from one code to another code. Macromolecule complex contains RNA and proteins. It has two ribosomal subunits, like this, the large ribosomal subunit and the small ribosomal subunit. Uh, both of them contains RNA and proteins, and the area of interaction between two subunits has the interface. By just by decreasing concentration of magnesium, these this subunits can dis dissociate. Here you can see composition of, of the ribosome. It contains, as I said, two-thirds of mass. This is core of the structure. This is RNA completely, and 50 individual proteins. They are kind of linkers in, in, in the ribosome, and during during long time, People thought that the ribosome uh, proteins are involved in some function, but as, as you can see here, I will stop for a second, as you can see here, that the, the important functional elements, the three tRNAs and messenger RNA, they are in interface area where practically no proteins. So all interactions, what we have inside, this messenger RNA, three tRNAs, and ribosomal RNA, so proteins are not involved in this business. <coughs> so that's why people think that the ribosome is the biggest enzyme, uh, the ribozyme uh, the, in, in the cell. So now come back to the standard. <coughs> point of view, the, the ribosome function. As you, as you know, in the history of protein synthesis, ribosome function was studied by, by biochemical methods, and of course people learn before X-ray analysis and the structure of ribosome, they learn how ribosome works. And ribosome works, uh, here I'm going to speak in two-dimensional point of view, like cartoon. So, ribosome uh, responsible for protein biosynthesis, 
so at some moment uh, find the start codon of messenger RNA, which is located in 5' end of messenger RNA. And then it's that this process has name initiation of translation. Then ribosome goes through the messenger RNA, reading, reading information of, of message, and producing the protein. This step has name elongation. And then it comes to the end, we find the stop codon, and then we have release of the final protein, and that process can repeat again when the ribosome dissociates from, from this place and goes and initiate translation again. So this is classical point of view, and when we look to the structure of ribosome, schematically we see, just to say what is important here, is two subunits, large subunit and a small subunit. <coughs> then we have interface area between two ribosomal subunits. As I said, that it is completely RNA structure. Then this, this interface area binds messenger RNA, which is mostly located on the small ribosomal subunit. And between two subunits, we have three tRNA binding sites three tRNA binding sites. The first one is A site, aminoacyl tRNA binding site. Second one, P site, peptidyl tRNA binding site, which is mm, tRNA with growing peptide. And then E site is, uh, is the site of exiting tRNA right before leaving the ribosome. So tRNA comes from that right side, binds to A site, moves to P, to E, and then leaves. So this is schematically tRNA structure, and if to speak about initiation of translation, <clears throat> just to remind you that initiation of translation has two steps. One is pre-initiation complex, when, when the small ribosomal subunits binds messenger RNA and transfer RNA with, with mm, this is f met tRNA, initiator tRNA, and it binds to AUG codon. And this process happened in the presence of three proteins, initi initi initiation factor 1, 2, 3. And after this, after pre-initiation complex formation, the large ribosomal subunit comes and fix the position of tRNA and messenger RNA, and factors leave the ribosome. Here is, there is one important thing, is localization of the messenger RNA on the ribosome. You can easily imagine that it can, it can have a slippage in one direction or another, so it has to be fixed. And the level of fixation in bacteria, uh, the, the step of fixation in bacteria found by, by Shina and Dalgarna a long time ago, they discovered a sequence which already exists in messenger RNA few nucleotides before start AUG codon. And this sequence, Shiner Dargarna, uh, can form duplex with three prime end of 16S of ribosomal RNA, which has always the, 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 the strong position. So like that, messenger RNA forms the duplex, and orientation of this, of this messenger RNA will be correct for binding of tRNA FMET and AUG codon with FMET tRNA will be in P site. Otherwise, as you can imagine, that if we will have a shift one or two directions, we will have a, a nonsense, nonsense peptide synthesized by, by ribosome just by shifting of, of the frame. That was important. <coughs> so, um, so. I'm speaking only about biochemical data for the moment, okay? Then we will jump to the three-dimensional point of view, just to see how it looks like. So this is also biochemical, biochemical information, that how elongation works. So this is complex of the ribosome with, with tRNA in P site and growing peptide. You can see here, this is messenger RNA. A site is empty. So the new amino acid delivered by the new tRNA in the complex with elongation factor Tu, which is G, G protein, binds to A site, and after GTP hydrolysis, Tu factor leaves. And after when Tu factor leaves, we have the step of accommodation. 
when the when the tyranny accommodates such a way what, that the the new amino acid will be very close to growing peptide in peptide, and that that's, that space has named peptidyl transferase center. And in peptidyl transferase center, we have spontaneous reaction, peptidyl transferase reaction, and we have now peptide which is linked to tRNA in A site. Okay. Now we have tRNA in A site with peptide, and the P site tRNA is deactivated. Now we need to move all the all the ligands in the in the left direction. So in this process has named translocation, and translocation happened in the presence of another G protein. Then this is elongation factor G, which helps to the ribosome <coughs> and catalyze that reaction of translocation. Again, translocation, it's a movement of tRNAs from one side to another, but it happens simultaneously with messenger RNA, because every tRNA has triplet-triplet in interaction with, with the messenger RNA. So now we have tRNA with peptide in P site and the previous tRNA deacylated in exiting site right before leaving. And in the next step, the tRNA leaves, the G factor leaves, so the, the, pro the ribosome is ready for, for the next step, next elongation step. Like that, we, will, we produce any type of protein in the cell according to the messenger RNA information. Just to finalize that, I want to show you that the process of um, the termination of protein biosynthesis happened when, when ribosome meet these three different, three different stop codons. And, <clears throat> and in, 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 in this stop, these stop codons recognize by protein. This is first example in the protein biosynthesis scheme when the protein recognized the triplet of the messenger RNA. Before, it was always tRNA. It is, was easy to imagine that triplet-triplet interaction like, uh, like classical uh, RNA or DNA, DNA nucleotides, nucleotides uh, um, pairing. But in this case, we have protein which recognize stop codon. And this is release factor. And this release factor has two important places. One recognition, one place of, for recognition of, of the codon specific codon, <coughs> and in other place for the release of the protein from, from PTRNA. So after interaction of this protein, we have release. So actually there are two proteins which are involved in this business in prokaryotic system. <coughs> no, I, we are not going to stop on, on this. this. is the classical view. And the last step of protein synthesis is recycling in order to make full final recycling of the, of the ribosome where protein, the ribosome can dissociate from messenger RNA. We have specific protein which has name recycling factor which binds to the ribosome to A site, to empty A site with deacylated tRNA in P site. And G factor helps again to dissociate everything from the ribosome and everything leaves the ribosome and then ribosome can do reassociation again from the start codon and start process from the beginning. So somehow this is also structural data. <coughs> because this structural data show that the, the, the factors are coming from left side of the ribosome, not from the right side. The messenger RNA binds to, to the subunits. The, tRNA, the tRNAs are inside. But in the beginning, before structure, real X-ray analysis of the ribosome, positions of the tRNA was not clear at all. People thought that the tRNAs are sitting somewhere here. It was a very big battle during many years between different schools, how many tRNAs in the ribosome simultaneously can sit, two or three. <coughs> and only X-ray analysis show three tRNAs, they are in interface area. The interaction with messenger RNA goes this way and this way. I will show you a little later. So now we have this information. This is the structure of ribosome. 
So let's speak about this because this is important. That because every structural analysis comes from from the from the data what people obtained biochemically. And biochemically it was one phenomenon obtained. You can see that publication is from eighty eight and, and it's long long story. It was not PowerPoints at that time at all. So <clears throat> so what was shown? That <clears throat> in cell free system Normally, we should have ribosomes, messenger RNA, and tRNAs, oscillated tRNAs, and if we mix everything together in the presence of elongation factors, we can have protein synthesis. If it is poly U system, we will have UUU, uh, UUU, uh, pardon, uh, if it is poly U system, we will have phenylalanine uh, production. If we have poly A system, we will have lysines. Okay, so what was found? If from this system to remove messenger RNA, protein biosynthesis still continue. This is interesting phenomenon that we don't need messenger RNA. Normally, presence of amino acylated tRNAs in the ribosome is already enough to have full process. And and he is shown that. We, uh, that this is protein biosynthesis in, uh, of polylysins in, uh, without any, 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 any poly A in the system, and if to exclude from this, from this system, exclude factors, no synthesis. So it means that it is real protein uh, ribosome, ribosome synthesis. More than that, the product which, which is appear in this, uh, in this po uh, uh, tRNA license, the product has triple, triple, four, five, six amino acids uh, in, in protein biosynthesis. So it means it is not very long peptides, but synthesis, it works. So it gives us two. The tool is we wanted to show position of messenger RNA on the ribosome. We were able at that time to crystallize ribosomes in the presence of messenger RNA and tRNA and two tRNAs in the ribosome. Then, because of that knowledge, we form exactly the same type of complex just without messenger RNA. And we saw two structures <coughs> of the ribosome, this one and this one, and just by simple, uh, simple <coughs> comparison between these two structures, we found position of messenger RNA. Why it was so much important? Because the electron density, which we calculated at that period of time, was at very low resolution. That, this is the result. So just remove the model which we put in and look at the real density here. It's very smart imagination <laughs> of researchers to be able, having this kind of density, to put the messenger RNA in. But surprisingly, we were absolutely right. This position of messenger RNA never changed. Until today, we have exactly the same position, exactly the same orientation of, of the messenger RNA. Now we have very high resolution data, and we have all the time the same. So I will skip this. Okay. <clears throat> now another question. We ask ourselves, how the messenger RNA interacts with the ribosome? What is the process of it? So you can imagine in the, in the, in the protein biosynthesis, the first interaction should be <clears throat> formation of Scheindler-Garner duplex. Correct? I said from the beginning that for orientation, for correct orientation of messenger RNA, we need correct binding. So what we design? We design, we, uh, so first of all, what it means, Scheindler-Garner, just to show you that this is structure of 16S RNA, small ribosomal subunit RNA. This is the sequence of Scheindler-Garner, 3 prime end. This is, this is the Scheindler-Garner sequence so in 3 prime end of ribosomal RNA. So we, uh, we form, we took this sequence of messenger RNA, formed this duplex, just duplex of Scheindler-Garner, 
and show localization of this duplex on the ribosome. It's not very much visible, but you can see that here presented electron density map it's at quite high resolution, where we can build the model of, of this duplex on the ribosome. And this is closest protein to this, to this duplex protein, uh, uh, S, S2. So then, after that, <coughs> when we understand that the first interaction of messenger RNA goes to Schindler Garner, then we design two types of ribosome complexes. One complex, as I said before, has name initiation complex. Initiation <coughs> complex means that we have Schindler-Garner sequence of our messenger RNA with correct distance or with AUG codon. <coughs> By statistical analysis, sorry, by statistical analysis of, uh, of different type of, uh, of messenger RNAs in, in bacteria, it was shown that the distance between Schindler-Garner and AUG colon is seven nucleotides. As you can imagine, <coughs> like Having this kind of messenger RNA, we fix the messenger RNA in the ribosome in two places. One by Schindler Gardner, because it is Schindler Gardner. Another one is here we have <coughs> binding of tRNA, initiated tRNA. And this is, this we, we name tense complex. Okay? In other complex, we have the same type of the same type of Schindler Garner, but we give the ribosome to choose ribosome position of of the tRNA, just having U U U U U. Okay? In this complex we name elongation complex when this, when the process already starts, or in other words, relax complex. <coughs> Result was very interesting. Um, we found position of Schindler Garner in initiation complex here, uh, position of Schindler Garner in relax complex here. So with these two positions, you can you can imagine that the first binding, first binding of, of the uh, yes and uh, sorry <coughs> and the. In the first experiment, we show that Schindler-Garner position itself is here. And this is post-initiation complex, huh? after beginning of translation. Uh, this, is comp this, is tyran this is position of Schindler-Garner before beginning of translation. So, I will show you final, 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 final scheme. So now we can explain how, how things happen. So first, messenger RNA binds to the ribosome, and it has that position. Then, in order to bind tRNA in P side, the messenger RNA has to move first and form somehow tense complex with fixation of tRNA. <coughs> then after the beginning of translation, it goes, it goes in that direction in the beginning, and it becomes more relaxed, and then it continues to, to, to walk <laughs> where 5 prime end and 3 prime end are flexible, and only this part of messenger RNA is fixed on the ribosome and visible. Um, okay. This is, this is the view how messenger RNA behave on the ribosome. And, <clears throat> and then we start to look at the, at the interactions of, 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 of the messenger RNA and tRNA on the ribosome. So we are coming back, we are coming back to the same scheme that if to, to, if to look here on the ribosome, and make a slice on the ribosome on the level of messenger RNA, you can see that messenger RNA enter 
from, from the backside into to the ribosome through the messenger RNA tunnel, then goes to interface area. This is interface area. This is triplets of A site, P site, E site, <coughs> and turn back and goes out, and this is Scheindler Garner uh, interactions of, of, of the messenger RNA. So now we can describe everything in details of interaction, and several interesting findings uh, we have just having this kind of information. <coughs> Again, biochemically, many people, uh, biochemically people studied structure of, of tRNAs and they found that there are some interesting modifications of, on the tRNA structure. For example, there is one modification, uh, um, always we have modification at position 30, 37 of tRNA anticodon loop. This is tRNA anticodon loop. In the, in the loop we have, first of all, we have anticodon, AAG in, in our case, uh, which will interact with with uh, with uh, with codon UUU, and in the front of in the front of this anticodon we have adenosine 37, which is already always modified. That's why it is quite important, as if you understand, to work with with natural natural products. For example, if to imagine that simply to use tRNA, which produced by T7 transcription, we will never have this information because we will not have all the modifications which exist in, in uh, actually plenty of modifications in the tRNA, and many of them have specific, for us, unknown specificity. But we study this one because it, that become visible. So here we have modification in case of tRNA feed, we have two types of modifications. This one uh, is quite flexible, if it is flexible, structurally it's not visible, okay, we miss it. But this one we see, this is methyl TO group in, 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 in phenylalanine. Oh, pardon, in, in adenosine. <coughs> now we can describe interactions of tRNA messenger RNA already anatomic level. We go, we go deep. So here you see tRNA in A site, and here you see tRNA in P site. In <coughs> here we have anticodons of our tRNA, and this is the codons, UUU codons, and in both cases you can easily see that the modification of adenosine 37 involved in the stacking of adenosine of, mes of, of uridine of messenger RNA in position 4 or in position 1 here. Again, biochemically it was known that the binding of tRNA with modification and without that modification is different. We knew before that stability of tRNA on the ribosome with modification is higher. Now we can describe what's the reason for that, why this, this, uh, why it is exist. <clears throat> First time when I was speaking about this result on the tRNA meeting, the guy from Sweden who spent significant part of his life studying this, he came to me and said, that, let's go, I will buy beer for you. <laughs> so we, <coughs> I was quite happy that <laughs> and I got beer for, for explanation of, of this. Was, was, another, was another part of this story that, as I said, that during long time was fight between ribosomologists working in this field, how many tRNAs we have on the ribosome. One school was speaking that we have only two tRNAs, AP, and <clears throat> three other laboratories, only three among many, only three laboratories, they were speaking about uh, how uh, about third tRNA binding site, and that was E site. Okay, for us was okay, it doesn't matter how many sites there. So when we saw the structure, finally we saw three tRNAs simultaneously. And then we described position of E site, what it means. Ah, yes, I forgot. These three groups, they were also in contradiction with, with each other. Some of them, they were speaking that there is no codon anticodon interaction in E site. In other group, they were speaking about there is codon anticodon interaction. 
So finally, we found medium. You can see the type of interaction here in ESA. We can, we can easily see only one real pair between, between ETRNA and the codon. The second pair practically doesn't exist because the distance is too, too low, too, too, <coughs> too high, 3.7 angstrom, and the third one doesn't exist. We have even flip out the nucleotide of the messenger RNA. So it means that we have codon anticodon interaction, but very weak. Okay, this is, this is the way how we, we use uh, biochemical data and at the same time explain to people what is visible from, from our data and it helps to understand several things. On the top of it, we found that this, this modification in, in, in ESA in form very interesting net of interactions with, with, magnesium, <coughs> with magnesium atom between ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, and this modification of, of adenosine 37 in E site. It's also known that if to remove this modification, we increase immediately the frame shift. For example, if we have no that modification, we can have frame shift of the tRNA in both sides. So it means that <clears throat> this molecule, this modification in E site for adenosine 37, and involvement of this magnesium, and net of this interaction, interactions, keep the position of messenger RNA in, co in correct way, and we can continue all the time during this cycling of elongation without shifting the messenger RNA. Okay. So, again, coming back to the history, it was interesting that, that it was shown a long time ago that in the cell-free system, with, in the poly-U cell-free system, <coughs> if to add another type of, another type of uh, tRNA, not correct tRNA, not phenylalanine tRNA, amino acid, we can get protein synthesis. And that kind of wrong protein synthesis. <coughs> and this, this process uh, has named miscoding, but, but it's, it, is, it is studied biochemically from different point of view, but we wanted to explain because uh, this process, because that could be explanation how we can have mutations, why sometimes ribosome accept external instead of correct tRNA and <coughs> introduce and introduce in, right in the protein, uh, I mean, not correct amino acid. Um, the explanation, so now I need to find correct slide. <coughs> yeah, first this. So we were, because of this, now we can do design of, of our complexes, and, and we can design cognate complex, for example. You see that we have correct, correct interactions between codon and anticodon of tRNA, and we can introduce also, also not correct nucleotide, GU, GU based, based pair, which doesn't exist. We can introduce it in the first position, or in the second position. Normally, GU base pair by prediction of, of chem, chemical uh, chem, chemistry uh, has to form <coughs> wobble, wobble pair. Wobble pair is presented here. It's not correct base pairing between G, G and U. It's a base pairing with a shift. So, geometrically, it's very different. We can recognize by, by analysis, structural analysis, this kind of pair or this kind of pair. So, GU should be, should be wobble pair, but experimentally, we found that GU pair has exactly the correct geometry like, G, uh, like AC pair. This is in the first position, and the same in the second position. 
So it means that in the ribosome, in the ribosome, in the first position of codon anticodon interaction, in the second position of codon interaction, ribosome dictate the geometry, even if it is not correct base pair. Because in the third position, which is not important for recognition, we have <coughs> we have GU pair which is shifted, which is wobble pair. So that could be explained only no, we explain it only one way. That it can it can happen only in case of total totameric shift. <coughs> Here is the final slide showing that GC base pair is correct. Okay? GU base pair should be wobbled. But GU base pair can have the same geometry as correct J pair if, if we have Keno et al. Uh, uh, shift. This is not our idea. That was predicted by Watson and Crick when they, when they published the first, the first paper about, about the DNA structure. They predicted because they use they use always ketoform in in the in in in, uh, in the uh, DNA structure, and but they say that if the <clears throat> if the form will be sparse part of the nucleotides will be enol form, we will have we will have mispairing <coughs> in other in other type of pair. So we just prove what is already done <coughs> by by the brain of famous people. Okay, uh, this is just the people of, uh, of two groups which were involved in, in, in the business, what, what I was speaking about, and, and it's uh, in the time, it's probably <coughs> more than 20 years. So. Not all of them here, but uh, because it was divided for, I was speaking about the story which done in United States and in Strasbourg later. Here is only people in Strasbourg. In United States, first of all, Harry Noller and Jamie Kate, they were uh, our colleagues in, in realization of first structure of, of the ribosome. That's it. <laughs>